Hello! For those who don't know me, my name is Imi, and I have always been interested in visual aesthetics. Shapes, colors, and themes all form different types of aesthetics, especially through fashion and media. And every generation forms new interests, new technologies. That's how Adam Punk, Seapunk, Vaporwave, and Y2K are created. Well, I can go on and on about this broad topic, but instead I had focused on Vocaloid and their endless list of music. As a Vocaloid fan, have you noticed the amount of fancy princess themed music videos prevalent in Vocaloid songs? Songs like Daughter of Evil, St. Julian, Cantarela, and so much more. It seems like a group of Vocaloid community is influenced by the aesthetic princess core. However, I believe it's more than that. I believe Japanese creators are rather expressing their creativity through the voice synthesizers. Through this creativity, they can form stories of all kinds. Of course, that's why we have songs such as the Seven Deadly Sins series, which is created by Mothi. Characters are dressed elegantly with suits or puffy dresses because of their particular setting. However, they are enchanted with sin, allowing them to have evil special powers. So in this case, the aesthetic theme transforms more than just princesses. It's actually fairy tale. Moreover, stories like Hansel and Gretel and The Sleeping Beauty are borrowed in a couple of these stories. Now that we identify the actual aesthetic, we can pinpoint it on such songs like Kikuo's Red Riding Hood's Wolf and Yugami P's Ali's Human Sacrifice. Okay, so what about songs like World is Mine? She is portrayed as a princess, but there is no fantastic story in it. Rather, it's simply about Hatsune Miku having that himidate personality, demanding attention and high-class priorities like the number one princess that she is. In the song, she has claimed so much she loves desserts, pudding, strawberry shortcake, I'm signing up, she sings. Her clothing is fancy, but it is not an actual princess dress. She does wear a small golden crown at times, and in other times, black ribbons as hair accessories. In short, the princess theme is taken symbolically. This for certain cannot be fairy tale. then what is it? Ah, well, this is the aesthetic commonly known as Pink Princess. Oh my goodness, I personally love this aesthetic so much. Just like World is Mine, motives of this theme are delicate clothing such as her lacy dress. We also have golden accessories, sugary desserts, expensive luxurious products, and lots of pink shades. However, World is Mine is not the only one with this style. We also have LOL lots of laugh. Thinking of it right now, LOL may also have Yumekawaii components as well. The song tells a fictional world about feminine comfort, pleasure, and relaxation like bathtubs, deserts once again, along with more important pink princess motifs like rabbits and chocolates. The music video's color palette shows pink, gold, silver hues everywhere as well. And although another popular song, Sweet Devil, has basically all pink as its color palette, Sweet Devil is different. This Miku is more of a daredevil hence the song title, and thus more provocative seductive. More adult, blending into another more modern aesthetic, Bimbo Core. It is more obvious when we see items like lipsticks and other makeup products on display. The lyrics perfectly describe the attitude of a bimbo who wants to be attractive and seductive, with excessive amount of rosy makeup. Now, let's move away from princesses and girly themes and delve into a very popular music video sang by Kagami Nadine, Meltdown. The song was uploaded on December 18, 2008, and has a high beat techno in it despite its lyrics implying depression or other darker topics. In the music video, we see Kakami Nadine, whose skin is monochromatic, appearing canvas white instead. Overall, the brightness is strong, but there is a sky blue light shining against the dark tones. The nuclear reactor is three-dimensional, with sci-fi elements throughout the animation. Interestingly enough, early Y2K music videos contain the same motifs. It didn't matter the genre of the song, the blue contrasted lights beam on these videos. Their themes are electrifying, stoic, futuristic, cold, and somehow melancholic too. This type of aesthetic found in this era is called Chayron Crush. 
Jada Crush can also be identified on Supercell's Love is War music video. This time, Hatsune Miku's skin is white with black outlines and shadows. Her appearance is realistic and black tones are expressed everywhere. The blues are apparent as well, but it's likely due to it being Miku's themed color. That being said, Jadon Crush themes on both music videos are most likely just a coincidence then. Moving on, Yami Kawaii is a type of fashion found in Japan. It originated from another fashion called Yume Kawaii which is another aesthetic I'm obsessed about. <laughs> However, Yami Kawaii takes cuteness on a darker level. Well, we all know Vocaloid songs tend to be cute, but also dark at the same time. So of course, we can find Yami Kawaii on Nedu songs, Tokyo Teddy Bear, and Abstract Nonsense. Now, okay, what makes them exactly Yami Kawaii? First of all, the word yami means sickness, so we should find topics that relate to depression or other mental disorders, feeling detached from society, taking medication, as well as awareness for mental health. In Tokyo Teddy Bear, cuteness is depicted with a teddy bear that Rin is holding. And cuteness is also her high-pitched singing too. But as we look into the lyrics, she may be implying self-harm, and that she is feeling wrong with her whole body. She wants to say goodbye not only to her family, but to everyone she knows. The scissors she holds at times are also a huge yami kawaii motif, as sharp items are symbols of self-harm, a wish to drown out something, or simply a negative view on certain things. My favorite song, Abstract Nonsense, is similar in that it uses sharp items as a wish to destroy. In the music video, guns, syringes, and knives are depicted. Kagami Nerin explains how boring, tired she is in that the daily society organizations are pure scams, just making her feel like a monochrome puppet in her life. Her hopes and dreams are fiction and nothing is helpful. However, sweet desserts like cake are the only thing that can make her feel something. Another popular Vocaloid producer, Pinocchio P is well known for his yummy kawaii aesthetics as well. I'm also a big fan of his, but I will only sample a couple of his songs, which are sick sick sick, crappy fantasy days, and motivation is dead. All three, although different song topics, have the same pessimistic feeling, whether it be that love is just a sickness, have boring lives, or not enough motivation to strive forward. Pinocchio P loves to discuss worldwide society problems that happen in everyday, ordinary lives, which is what Yami Kawaii is about. Um, but hold on a second. Pinocchio P isn't all just about Yami Kawaii, you see? Personally, I've been a fan of him since around 2013, and I want to point out how different Pinocchio P's visual aesthetics were. Does anyone remember Mushroom Mother? It was one of his most popular songs at the time. Also, Psychedelic Smile. This one in my opinion is underrated, but either way, the songs along with others display strong neon colors, with topics that are unusual, weird, and sometimes kind of gross. I'm not sure about you, but sometimes these old songs remind me of an indie game called Yumeniki, which also emphasize this exact same motifs. In the aesthetic wiki, this artistic style has been identified as Kimoi Core. However, there is also so many geometric shapes and basic colors appearing for even Miku's design in certain songs, like Nina in another popular song, Common World Domination, which made it into Project Diva. Miku is dressed up having yellow, red, and blue colors, which are the primary colors in the color wheel. Other examples include Love is Onomatopoeia, Hitori Bochi no Yufo, and Nice to Meet You, Mr. Earthling. This is partially because the video creator, Eiji Eriki, for the music videos, uses Memphis design as part of their art style. Originally, Memphis design was created in the 80s, hence why the 80s and the 90s contain this type of simple shapes, lines, and colors. Hachi or should I say Kenshi Yonezu? If you don't know him, he's now one of the most famous J-pop artists of all time. Oh, and if you like anime, you should know he's the one who sang the opening for Chainsaw Man. Well, 
Back when he started music with Vocaloid, I personally really love his art style, but I could never pinpoint exactly what to call it. It was like punkish, but not too grim. Very colorful, but then not so much. I didn't know back then. Ah, uh, and there also used to be this fun dress up game in Divinart I love so much, and it reminded me a lot of Hachi style. But unfortunately, it got deleted or something. You guys know what I'm talking about? Please comment down below. <laughs> okay, back to the topic. So, after doing my research through the aesthetic wiki, I have to say that it was probably called Salvage Punk. It was the closest I could find, but it fits. For example, in Panda Hero, in the first verse, it says, <laughs> Meaning, pipes made out of scrap wood and rusted wheels are inside this crisped out painterly city. We are already starting with a setting, a place where junk is recycled and used for other purposes. Even with old stuff like rusting wheels are decorating the crazy city. And the music video itself shows Gumi with goggles on top of her baseball cap, a big tattoo on her arm, a tank top, and black paint under her eyes. This very much so screams out punk, as it contains non-conforming ornaments such as the tattoos and the face paint. At other times, she's wearing a nushanka and her hair is dyed neon pink. Various unrelated items are decorated in the background. Throughout the video, we see the flashy objects come and go in a DIY fashion, which is inherent in punk. Moreover, behind the lyrics, Gumi sings about opium, a messed up city, and people vanishing. A topic most likely about drug addicts dealing with the panda hero, who is the anti-hero of the city. Another perfect Hachi song example is of course Sun Planet. Because of course, it takes place on a desert, which is already a key element in salvage punk. Because, uh, people all have the same uniform, meaning they all share the same skull masks and jackets, and even some of them are wearing large bags, again, on a desert? Sounds weird, but not for salvage punk. And one last thing to mention, the mountain of trash just piled together, which symbolizes Hatsune Miku's previous old works. The piles of old artworks, music videos, and songs in general, they are now regarded as forgotten, according to the song. And actually, never mind, that's not the last thing I will mention because I just remember that Genshi Yonesu literally borrows lyrics from other Miku songs as a way to commemorate those treasures, again, further proving that Hachi has salvage punk elements. And talk about music producers, I should mention another dearly, very beloved one, who isn't around with us anymore, Wawaka. As many of you, Mokuloid fans, already know, Wawaka has a very distinctive color palette. Really, it's just white and shades of gray. Each and every song he made has its own appropriate art cover. They all contain the simplest of shapes, lines, circles, squares, only a few of these covers depict objects or symbols, that which are two hearts, a musical note, and a room presumed to be the dance hall. Yet, we know that they all somehow have stored feelings. You feel some of them moving, or shaking, or static, or cold, based from the song it was meant for. In the art world, this containment of emotions inside abstractness is called suprematism. This was originally created in the 70s, and as you can see, there is even similarities with some of the works back then. However, Wawaka is explicitly black and white, making his art unique to his style. Side note, Wawaka may also have vector art elements, especially in the World's End dancehall music video. But I personally believe Wawaka's art is lean more towards suprematism. But let me know your opinions down below. And finally, to our last topic and probably one you immediately recognize, the immense amount of dark clowncore in Vocaloid songs. I really don't know what's up with the Vocaloids and freaky, eerie things going along together, but it just simply happens. I don't even know where to start. Well, maybe we should start with an underrated, in my opinion, yet influential composer, Machigadita. 
he is mainly popular for his Dark World Circus series. Just by the title, you can already tell it's Dark Clowncore. I won't talk about the story in detail, but instead the visuals, colors, and themes inside, especially on the main song. So far, the art style contains sharp black outlines with a dull color palette. All characters seem to be stitched one way or another. They explain the circus is fun and joyous, only to reveal that it's painful and that they want to die. They have been mutilated and stitched up to become clown monsters. Another similar song Machigarita made is called Hateful Wonderland. Miku is essentially stuck in an escapable amusement park filled with crying clowns and stings pain on her arms with needles. Okay, let's move on to other songs, Alice Human Sacrifice and Alice in Wonderland. And I know they don't have clowns or circuses, but both are based off of Alice in Wonderland, which is often parallel with colorful magic in the strange, so they go hand in hand. While Alice Human Sacrifice is a story about multiple deaths, Alice in Wonderland is, um, it's just really weird and gross. It's basically a Disneyland, but R-rated edition. I really don't know how to explain it. Honestly, it's better to watch it by yourself. That is, if you're okay with it. And then there's the obvious clown core songs, Crazy Clown and Circus Monster. I wasn't much of a fan of those two songs, but I know they both correlate to the dark theme. Finally, we have songs like Twilight Circus and Puppet Clown Pierrot. So neither of them are supposed to be creepy or grim, but they still present Cloudcore in a solemn, gloomy matter. Okay, like I said, there's so many songs that I probably missed out, and well, Vocalite in general will never frown out of songs. And I know there's more aesthetics out there, such as the Halloween or electronic sci-fi themes, but that is enough for this video. So, let me know your opinions down below in the comments! I really want to see more of what Vocalite has for us in terms of aesthetics. So as always, thank you for watching! Hope to see you next time! Bye bye!